What's going on guys? Greg here with Buy or Build. Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful, beautiful Friday. We got the NSX up on the lift. If you guys saw the R8 delivery video, I mentioned that we had a blown coilover on this car and we have to drive it two hours to Pennsylvania tomorrow. Luckily, we got some new replacements or like new replacements that we're gonna put on. I was eventually gonna go with a brand new set of KWV3s and even at cost or over $3,000 with shipping and you're gonna pay a surcharge on all KW products now. And I also wanna do air cups from Stance Parts because this car sits so low to the ground, you really have no clearance at all to go over steep driveways or speed bumps and even getting onto the quick jacks itself is pretty challenging. So we scoured the internet, asked my buddies on Instagram, other NSX owners who have been in the game for a long time. Mexi Ricer Garage, the guy I got the wheels from, actually had a buddy, local to him in California, selling a like new set of KW V3s with air cups already put onto it, and I got it for a great price. Unfortunately, UPS tracking, I was tracking it like five times a day, trying to see how soon that would get here so I can get it onto the car before we bring it down to PA. And train derailment has delayed your shipment. And it was like that for two days with no update. I was freaking out. Even though I had a fully insured coverage, like I would still have to go out and buy a whole brand new set and spend double what I paid. We got it yesterday. The box came a little bit beat up. So I was kind of worried that something got damaged during that derailment. And I don't know if a truck like got hit by a train or UPS was using a train to transport. I have no idea, honestly. So let's go ahead, take a quick look at it. Came in this big box. As you can see right here is where it ripped and things were kind of just like sticking out a little bit. Luckily, the top hats of the coilovers appear to not be damaged at all and all the additional OEM springs from the KW struts are still there, so nothing got lost. We got the tool kit, so this has the spanner wrench and the Allen head for the set screw. That's nice, but let's look at these coilovers. KW V3s, if you were to buy these brand new, they're about $4,000 as is, right? Then you gotta get the air cups. If you buy air cups, I think from Stance Parts, for a set of just four of them, I think you're looking at about six, seven hundred dollars. Then you gotta buy the shorter springs from Swift Springs. You can also get shorter KW springs, but I believe he went with Swift Springs. They're five inch springs, and I think these are seven inch springs. And the reason why you need a shorter spring is because you got to fit the airbag system on top. And then you also have to get different helper springs because the diameter of the Swift spring is different than the, the KW spring. So this one would have been wider or skinnier than the Swift spring. So then you got to buy the top hat. Top hat is another additional cost. So you're looking at 4,000 plus like 700 for eight springs, as you buy by both sets. And then you're looking at another 700 for the cups, and then probably another 400 for the top hat. And I paid 2,500 for all of this. And all I gotta do is buy an air compressor, the tank, the lines, and the valves. And that's, that's it. These were from California Car. I'm not sure the age on them, but they have about 10,000 miles. They look in great condition. Obviously, there's not a single speck of rust on here. And so you probably didn't drive this at all in the rain. Definitely not in the snow, not in uh, Southern California. Here are the other springs from KW. And here's a box for Swiss springs. You got a little, some part numbers here. So as far as the install goes, obviously you gotta lift up the car. We got the quick jacks. Here's the model number. Perfect for the NSX. 7000 SLX. In order to access the struts, we got to take off this trim piece here. And uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. There's a couple of Phillips head screws holding this down. So there's one here, one in the middle, and one on that side. 
and there might be a couple more i haven't done this in a long time but we probably got to pop the trunk open too and there might be some additional screws on the back side of this but that's all you got to really do to uh, take this off and if you want you can also take this middle strut bar out to give you a little bit more room doesn't really make a huge difference honestly but here's the coilovers and on the front i show you how it is on the front it's uh the same concept you just take off these plastic uh, cowl and actually i don't even think you have to do that you got these rubber grommet caps you should be able to just pop those off and loosen up the nuts so again pretty straightforward we'll have a better idea once we take the wheels off so if you guys are looking in here you can see that the strut is just soaked in fluid and if you look around you can kind of see where the fluid got absorbed we're gonna get this out i mean install is very straightforward here on the back there's one nut right there. And that holds on the end link. And you just put a wrench there to hold it in place. So you zap it out, pop out that end link, three nuts on top, and easy swap. All right, got all the screws out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's seven screws total. And this thing lifts right up out of the way. And now we got complete access to our struts. And uh, we can even clean up this area too. A little 14 millimeter action. I'm gonna loosen them a bit, not gonna go uh, fully out. All right, so the nut is a 17. This is a 14 on the sway bar. And that, ladies and gentlemen, might be the easiest coilover I have ever taken out. I did loosen up the sway bar nut so that this bolt can come out easier. But here it is, the blown strut, the culprit, this long bolt. Detach the sway bar, make it way easier. Well, we are all done here in the rears. Torqued to 69 foot pounds, torque to 39, and torque to 17. And we're all good to go. Put the wheels back on. We're gonna do the fronts now, and then we'll lower the car and see how it sits. Moving to the front, we already got everything detached. 12 millimeter on the brake line, 17 millimeter nut and bolt on the bottom strut. And up top again, 14 millimeter nuts and comes right out. So just push down on the control arm, get it loose, and then go around the brake line. Whole thing will come right out. The other thing I forgot to mention, take out the two 10 millimeter bolts holding that on. That will help you a lot. So you can push this down, disconnect the uh, sway bar end link too. You got a ton of room to go. All right, guys, moment of truth here. We're about to lower the car. We have all four wheels on, coilovers are on. All right. It's pretty high up. So, the fronts we can definitely lower. I think we can go like five turns, probably. The rear, rear we can go lower. I mean, we just came off the jack, so the car's gets a little bit higher anyway until we move it forward and back a little bit. But I say we can probably go three turns on the back. Coilovers on this car, very, very easy to do. Simple tools, really don't need anything crazy. One person job, and you can have the front and rear done probably two hours taking your time so that's the kwv3 installation obviously once we get the height set up we got to go back for a four-wheel alignment to the specs that we had on those coilovers 
And we're bouncing to the next video. We got to take the R8 over to Ludensol. We're going to start pulling the wrap off. And the wheels will be there tomorrow, polished, and put those on too. So we'll see you over there. Peace out. See you in the next one.